just to come on here for current maths today, we're going to be looking at the whole of suckles and higher maths 2023 ma exams. So, SQA Higher Maths 2016, paper 2, question 4, had this circle question. Circle C1 and C2 have these equations. And write down the centres and radius of the circles. So, for part A, remember, looking at the start of our exam paper, we are told quite a few things. But, essentially, minus 5 and 6 is the centre here. And for circle two, well, we're going to have to do some work. So we call the number in front of x 2g. So if I say 2g equals minus 6, and the number in front of y we say is 2f, well, there's no y term, so that's 0. So g is minus 3, and f is 0. And the centre is defined as minus g minus f, so that is going to be 3 and 0. The radius of circle 1 is just the square root of 9, which is 3. And to get the radius of circle 2, remember, it's the square root of f squared plus g squared, so 0 squared plus 3 squared minus c. Well, c is minus 16, so plus 16. So that's the square root of 9 plus 16, square root of 25, which is 5. Part B says, show that C1 and C2 do not intersect. Well, if we can work out the distance between the two centres and then work out the distance of the, the two radiuses together, if the two radiuses add up to less than the distance between the centres, then they don't intersect. So our distance between C1 and C2, well, that's just Pythagoras, so it's minus 5 minus 3 squared. plus 6 minus nothing squared, distance formula. So that is the square root of minus 8 squared plus 6 squared. That's the square root of 64 plus 36. Square root of 100, which equals 10. So there's the distance between the centres. Sum of the radius of the radii. Well, that's just... 3 plus 5, which equals 8. So since R1 plus R2 is less than the distance between the centres, the circles do not intersect. And we're done there. SQA High Maths 2018, Paper 2, Question 5. PQR is a triangle with 3, 4 and Q9 minus 2 as shown. Find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of PQ. Now it's a circle question, but the circle part comes later. So this is straight line to start with. So we need the equation of a perpendicular bisector. So that cuts this in half. So we need the midpoint where that equals 3 plus 9 divided by 2 and 4 plus minus 2 divided by 2, that's 12 over 2, which is 6, and that's 2 over 2, which is 1. So we've got our midpoint, and then we need the gradient of P and Q, because this is perpendicular. So the gradient of P and Q is minus 2 take away 4, y2 minus y1, over 9 take away 3, x2 minus x1. That's minus 6 over 6, which is minus 1. So therefore, the gradient of L1 equals 1 since M1 times M2 equals minus 1. So now we can use Y minus B equals MX minus A. Y minus 1 is equal to 1X minus 6. Or Y minus 1 equals X take away 6. So Y equals X minus 5. And we're done there. Let's move on to part B. Part B of this question says L2, the perpendicular bisector of PR, the equation of that is 3y plus x is 25. Calculate the coordinates of C, the intersection between L1 and L2. So we're solving simultaneous equations because it's fed the point of intersection between two lines. So our first equation is given to us 3y plus x equals 25. And we just worked out, remember, that y equals x minus 5 was the other equation. 
So rearranging that so that everything's on the same side, you've got y minus x equals minus 5. Adding these together, you get 4y equals 20, so y equals 5. Subbing it into this equation here, we get 5 equals x minus 5, so x must be 10. The point of intersection is 10, 5. Part C of 2018, paper 2, question 5. This is where the circles come in. C is the centre of the circle which passes through the vertices of triangle P, Q and R. So C is our centre, which we've just worked out, remember, is 10, 5. So we can note that on our diagram. And it says determine the equation of this circle. Remember, the equation of a circle from the start of exam paper is x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. And a and b is our centre, and obviously r is the radius. So now we just need to work out the radius then. So we need the distance between the centre and one of the points. So any one would do, but we'll, we'll know p, we know q. So let's use P, let's work out this distance, I'll just draw it on for us. There's our radius there. So using our distance formula to get R, R equals the square root of x2 minus x1, so 10 minus 3 squared, plus y2 minus y1, 5 minus 4 squared. So that equals the square root of 7 squared plus 1 squared which is the square root of 50. 7, 7 is 49 plus 1 is 50. Now, we would, we would simplify that normally, if we'd, but we're going to square it back up anyway because we need r squared. So now it's very simple. The equation of our circle is just x minus 10 squared plus y minus 5 squared equals 50 r squared. And we're done there. Square higher maths 2018, paper 2, question 12. Circle 1 has equation x minus 13 squared plus y plus 14 squared equals 100. And circle 2 has this equation. Write down the coordinates of the centre of circle C1. Well, that's nice and easy. C1 centre equals 13 minus 4. Part 2 says... The centre C1 lies on the circumference of C2, show that C is minus 455. So we've got our equation x squared plus y squared plus 14x minus 22y plus C equals 0. But we know that this centre lies on it. So if it lies on it, it means if I sub in 13 and minus 4 for x and y, that has to equal 0, otherwise it wouldn't lie on it. So we can just do that. So we get 13 squared plus minus 4 squared plus 14 times 13 minus 22 times minus 4 plus c equals 0. Bit of maths to do, but this was a calculator paper, so you just get your calculator out and work it out. You get 169 plus 16 plus 182 plus 88 plus c equals 0. So then adding up all the numbers, you get 455 plus C equals 0, and therefore C is negative 455 as required. Okay, part B says the line joining the centres of the circles intersects C1 at point P. Determine the ratio in which P divides the line joining the centres of the circle, and then find the coordinates of P. So the radius of C1 we already know is equal to 10. And we can work out the radius of our second circle by using the formula at the start of the exam paper. But I remember it is the square root of g squared plus f squared. So g is going to be 7 and f is minus 11 minus c, which is in this case 455, so plus c. So that gives us the square root of 625, just put it in a calculator, which is 25. So we've got our two radiuses. We know the, this radius here from C1 to P is 10. We know the radius from here 
all the way over to here is 25, so that must be 15, because 15 and 10 make 25. So the ratio is dividing, P is dividing the line, is simply 15 to 10, which we can simplify to 3 to 2. And we're done there. Part 2, hence or otherwise determine the coordinates of P. So the centre of our first circle is minus 7, 11. And then join another line. I'll draw a right angle triangle here. We know that the distance here must be 13 minus minus 7, which is 20. And we know that the distance up the side is 11 minus minus 4, which is 15. And P is 3 fifths of the way along. So I just need to do 3 fifths of 15. Nine and three fifths of twenty, which is twelve. Minus seven add twelve is five. And for a y part, we're starting up at eleven and we're going down nine. Eleven minus nine is two, so we get five two, and we're done there. P is the centre of a third circle C three. C two touches C three internally. Determine the equation of C3. So it's best to probably draw a picture for this one. So there's our picture, we've got original picture, and then we've got this new circle, and it says that C2 touches C3 internally, so it's touching it at one point inside the circle. And we have to determine the equation of C3. Remember, P is the center of this big, massive circle, okay? So our center, we already know, is 5, 2. And we need to work out our radius. But we already know some information from what we've already worked out previously. We know that the radius of this big circle here is 25. And we know that the distance between here and here was 15. Because it was 10 over here as well. 10 and 15 make 25. So if we know that the, this is 25 and from here to here is 15, then the radius of our new circle is 25 plus 15, which is equal to 40. So now we've got everything we need. We can just write down our equation of our circle, x minus 5 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 40 squared. Working out 40 squared, you get x minus 5 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 1600. And we're done. Next we have maths paper one question three. Circle C1 has this equation and C2 has centre 4 minus 2. The radius of C2 is equal to the radius of C1. Find the equation of circle C2. So we have got our equation up here and just remember from our equation x squared plus y squared minus 2x minus 2y minus 26 equals 0. You're given at the start of the exam paper the radius. The radius is quoted as equaling the square root of g squared plus f squared minus c. And your g and your f, well, this is called 2g and 2f. So 2g is minus 6, and 2f is minus 2. So my g is minus 3, and my f is minus 1. So my radius is equal to minus 3 squared plus minus 1 squared. Take away C, but it's a minus already, so plus 26. So that means that going down here, my radius is equal to the square root of 9 plus 1 plus 26. That's the square root of 36, which is equal to 6. So we've got our radius, and we know the circle centre is 4 minus 2. So we know the equation of C2 must equal x minus 4 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals 36. And we're done there. Higher Maths 2019 paper 2 question 15. A circle has centre 8, 12. P 513 lies on the circle as shown on the outside. Find the equation of the tangent at P. Now, if we want to find the equation of the tangent, if it's about circles, 
a tangent meets a radius at right angles. So we can find the gradient of the radius if then m1 times m2 equals minus 1. So we'll just do that. Let me just draw that picture in so it's really clear. That's a right angle. So the gradient of c to p, or p to c, is 12, 13 take away 12, over 5 take away 8. That's 1 over minus 3, or minus a third. So the gradient of our perpendicular equals 3, since m1 times m2 equals minus 1. And we've got our point. Our point is 5 13. So it's just now straight line work. y minus b equals mx minus a. So y minus 13 equals 3x minus 5. y minus 13 is 3x minus 15. So y equals 3x minus 2. And we're done there. But b says the tangent of p meets the y-axis at point t. State the coordinates of t. Part b, i. Remember the equation of our tangent is 3x minus 2. So our, it meets the y-axis when x is 0, in other words, minus 2. So the point is just equal minus 2. And we're done there. So part b2 says find the equation of a circle that passes through the points c, p and t. So if we've got the picture of it here again, we've got C, P and T, and we're saying that there's some circle that goes through all three of these points, a bigger circle. Now, if I've drawn a, I've not drawn an accurate sketch of this, but we know that this is a right angle it's meant to be at he, P. Now that only happens in a circle when we make a tri triangle, and that would be the diameter. So we now know essentially that C, T is the diameter and therefore, we can work out <coughs> we can work out the midpoint of C and T. So the midpoint of C to T, well, we've got eight, and then that is remember T is zero minus two, so it's eight plus zero divided by two, and it is twelve minus two divided by two, so that's eight over two is four. And we've got 10 over 2, which is 5. So we know our midpoint now is 4, 5. Now we need to know the radius. So we can do the distance between C and T. Remember, T is 0, minus 2. So the distance from C to T equals the square root of 4 minus 0 squared is 4 squared. And then 5 minus minus 2 squared is 7 squared. So it's 4 squared is 16, plus 49, that is the square root of 65. And therefore for the equation of a circle that goes through these points is simply x minus 4 squared plus y minus 5 squared equals 65, root 65 squared. And we're done there.
Okay, SQA. Higher maths, 2015, paper one, question 11. T minus two minus five lies on the circumference of the circle with this equation. Find the equation of the tangent to the circle passing through T. So let's work out the equation of the tangent. We, if we draw a little picture, just to give us an idea of what's happening, let's say that T is here, and we'll call that minus two minus five. And this is not an accurate picture. Then we've got our centre of our circle where we can work out our centre. It's minus 8, minus 2. And we have to find the equation of a tangent passing through T. So a tangent makes a radius at right angles. From national 5. So if we work out the gradient between the centre and T, then M1 times M2 equals minus 1. So the gradient... I'll just call this the centre, C, between C and T, equals minus 5 minus minus 2 over minus 2 minus minus 8. That's minus 5 add 2 is minus 3, minus 2 add 8 is 6, so that's minus a half. So therefore the gradient of our perpendicular equals 2 since M1 times M2 equals minus 1. So we've got our gradient of 2, and then we can use our point, so y minus b equals mx minus a as usual. The point obviously we're using is t, so it's y plus 5 minus minus 5 equals 2x plus 2. Multiplying that out, we get y plus 5 is 2x plus 4, so y equals 2x minus 1 is the equation of our tangent. B says the tangent is also a tangent to a parabola with equation y equals minus 2x squared plus px plus 1 minus p. Determine the value of p. So we've got y equals 2x minus 1, and then for part b, we've also got y equals minus 2x squared plus px plus 1 minus p. And since this is a tangent to this, then these are equal to each other. We can solve them simultaneously. So all we need to do is say that 2x minus 1 equals minus 2x squared plus px plus 1 minus p. So that's a quadratic to solve. So moving everything over to the same side, or just move everything over to the right, we get 2x squared plus 2x minus px. Then minus 1, then minus 1 again, and then plus p, and that equals 0. Tidying that up, squared, and then we want to have x as a thing, so that is plus 2 minus p times x, and then we've got as a constant term, minus 2 plus p equals 0. Now, if it's a tangent, b squared minus 4ac equals 0. Because it only has one solution. So that means we can say, remember, our, that would be our a, this would be our b, and this whole thing here would be our c. So we can say that we've got 2 minus p all squared minus 4 times 2 times minus 2 plus p equals 0. Solving that, multiplying out the bracket, we get 2 twos is 4 minus 4p plus p squared, and then we've got minus 8 times minus 2 is plus 16, and then we've got minus 8 times p, so minus 8p equals 0. Continuing on to solve this then, we've got p squared minus 12p plus 20 equals 0. So another quadratic to solve, but this one should be factorizable, hopefully. Double brackets. We've got p and p. 10 and 2 make 12 when you add them, so it's 10 and 2 minus 10 minus 2. So p equals 2 or p equals 10. But then if we go back to the original question, it says p is greater than 3. So with disregarding this one, p 
P equals 10 as our final answer. x squared high math 2017 paper 1 question 2. This point P lies on this circle. Find the equation of a tangent at P. So I've already drawn a picture. P could be round about here, minus 2, 1. And a tangent makes a radius at right angles. So if I knew the centre, then I could find the gradient of the centre and use perpendicular gradients. And then y minus p equals mx minus a. Now, from the start of the exam paper, you're given this formula. x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fx plus c equals 0. And then the centre, that's the big c here, is minus g minus f. And the radius is g squared plus f squared minus c, c being in here. So 2g is the number in front of x. So 2g is minus 8. And 2f is the number in front of y, which is minus 6. So g is minus 4, and f is minus 3. So our centre is 4, 3. Let's call that our centre. Now, we can do the gradient between c and p. So that's 3 minus 1 over 4 minus minus 2. That is 2 over 6, which is 1 third. So the gradient of our perpendicular must be minus 3, since m1 times m2 equals minus 1. And the point we've got is minus 2, 1. So y minus b equals mx minus a, so plus 2. So y minus 1 minus 3x minus 6. So y equals minus 3x minus 5. And that's the equation of our tangent. x squared higher maths 2018, paper 1, question 4. The point k lies in the circle with this equation. Find the equation of a tangent to the circle at k. Tangent meets a radius at right angles. So we need to find the center of our circle. So we've got it in expanded form. So from the start of the exam paper, we are told that x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fx plus c equals 0 is the equation of a circle where the center is equal to minus g minus f and the radius is equal to the square root of g squared plus f squared minus c. So looking up at our equation, the number in front of f, 2g is minus 12. And the number in front of y, 2f is minus 6, so that gives me g is minus 12 divided by 2, minus 6, and it gives me f is minus 6 divided by 2, minus 3. So our center is just simply 6, 3. Once we've got our center, we can find the gradient between our center, let's just call our center c. So the gradient between c and k is minus 5 take away 3 on the top and 8 take away 6 on the bottom. Minus 5 take away 3 is minus 8 over 2, which is minus 4. So the gradient of our perpendicular equals a quarter since m1 times m2 equals minus 1. So our point is 8 minus 5 for k. So we can use y minus b, y plus 5 equals m x minus a, which is 8. Times the 3 by 4, we get 4 times y plus 5 equals x minus 8. So 4y plus 20 is x minus 8, or to leave it in a nice way, 4y minus x equals minus 28 would be a fine answer. If you prefer y equals, you can divide 3 by 4 to get y equals a quarter of x, and then minus 28 divided by 4 is minus 7, if you prefer. Higher Maths 2019, paper 2, question 15. A circle has centre 8, 12. P, 5, 13 lies on the circle as shown on the outside. Find the equation of the tangent at P. Now, if we want to find the equation of the tangent, if it's about circles, a tangent meets a radius at right angles. So we can find the gradient of the radius, and then m1 times m2 equals minus 1. So we'll just do that. Let me just draw that picture in so it's really clear. That's a right angle. So the gradient of c to p, or p to c, is 12, 13 take away 12, 
over 5 take away 8. That's 1 over minus 3 or minus a third. So the gradient of our perpendicular equals 3 since m1 times m2 equals minus 1. And we've got our point. Our point is 5 13. So it's just now straight line work. y minus b equals mx minus a. So y minus 13 equals 3x minus 5. Y minus 13 is 3x minus 15, so Y equals 3x minus 2. And we're done there. But B says the tangent of P meets the y-axis at point T. State the coordinates of T. Part B, I. Remember, equation of our tangent is 3x minus 2. So our, it meets the y-axis when X is 0, in other words, minus 2. So the point is just equal minus 2. And we're done there. So part B2 says find the equation of a circle that passes through the points C, P and T. So if we've got the picture of it here again, we've got C, P and T, and we're saying that there's some circle that goes through all three of these points, a bigger circle. Now, if I've drawn a, I've not drawn an accurate sketch of this, but we know that this is a right angle it's meant to be at he, P. Now that only happens in a circle, when we make a tri triangle, and that would be the diameter. So we now know, essentially, that CT is the diameter. And therefore, we can work out, <coughs> we can work out the midpoint of C and T. So the midpoint of C to T, well, we've got 8, and then that is, remember, t is 0 minus 2. So it's 8 plus 0 divided by 2. And it is 12 minus 2 divided by 2. So that's 8 over 2 is 4. And we've got 10 over 2, which is 5. So we know our midpoint now is 4, 5. Now we need to know the radius. So we can do the distance between c and t. Remember, t is 0 minus 2. So the distance from c to t equals the square root of 4 minus 0 squared is 4 squared and then 5 minus minus 2 squared is 7 squared so it's 4 squared is 16 plus 49 that is the square root of 65 and therefore the equation of a circle that goes through these points is simply x minus 4 squared plus y minus 5 squared equals 65, root 65 squared. And we're done there. Okay, SQA Higher Math 2016 Paper 1 Question 8. The intersection of lines and circles this time. Show that the line with equation y equals 3x minus 5 is a tangent to the circle with this equation and find the coordinates of the point of contact. So if it is a tangent, it means this y is equal to the y in here. So I can substitute this into this equation. So I've got x squared plus 3x minus 5 squared plus 2x minus 4 times 3x minus 5 minus 5 equals 0. So multiplying out our brackets, we get x squared plus 3 threes are 9, so 9x squared 3 fives is 15 times 2 is 30, so minus 30x plus 25 plus 2x. 4 threes is 12, so minus 12x. 4 fives is 20, so plus 20, then minus 5 equals 0. So you're going to get a quadratic. So we've got x squared plus 9x squared is 10x squared. Minus 30x plus 2x is minus 28x. Minus 12x is minus 40x. And then we've got our number part. 25 plus 20 is 45 minus 5 is 40. And we know that that equals 0. So we can solve that by taking 10 out as a common factor. To get x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. And then let's solve it. Now we're looking if it's a tangent for only one solution. Because it only touches it at one point. So this should be equal roots. So let's check x and x. 
2 twos is 4, so minus 2 minus 2 equals 0. So we can say that it's got equal roots. So only one point of contact. Therefore, the line is a tangent to the circle. Find the coordinates of the point of contact. Well, we've already got this equation equal to zero, so that implies that x equals two. And then subbing that back in to get a y, well, we might as well just use our original equation, y equals 3x minus 5. So we've got y equals 3 times 2 minus 5. 6 minus 5 is 1, so we've got 1 and 2. So our point of contact is 2, 1. And we're done there. The intersection of lines and circles again, the line 3x intersects the circle of equation x minus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 25 find the coordinates of a point of intersection. So if it intersect, it means we're solving them simultaneously to see these points. So y equals 3x is our first equation. And when we'll write down our circle equation, x minus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 25. So to solve these simultaneously, we use substitution. We know that y is 3x, so we'll replace the y with 3x in this equation. So we've got x minus 2 squared plus 3x minus 1 squared equals 25. Multiplying out our brackets to get a quadratic then, we've got x squared minus 4x plus 4 for the first bracket. And then we've got 3 threes is 9x squared, 3 ones is 3, double that is 6, so minus 6x plus 1. And then I'll just take away 25 and make it equal to 0 because I'm going to get a quadratic. If you're struggling with multiplying out these brackets, you can just take your time and multiply them out any way you want. So we've got x squared and 9x squared is 10x squared minus 10x. 4 plus 1 is 5 minus 25 is negative 20 equals 0. 10 is a common factor. x squared minus x minus 2. So 10... Hopefully it's factorizable. 2 and 1. Um, we want to get minus 1, so it's minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. Minus 2 times 1 is minus 2. So x equals minus 1 or x equals 2. We've got our x point, now we need to get our y point. So when y equals 3x, x equal to minus 1, y equals minus 3. The point is minus 1, minus 3. And for y equal to 3x, where x equals 2, y equals 6. So our point is 2, 6. There's our two points of contact. And we're done there. Find the line y equals 3x plus 7 and 6 for circle x squared plus y squared minus 4x minus 6y minus 7. At the points p and q, find the coordinates of p and q. So I need to substitute y equals 3x plus 7 into it because they intersect. So part A... Try to find the points of intersection. So I'm going to sub y equals 3x plus 7 into the circle. So then I see a y, I'm going to write 3x plus 7. So I've got x squared plus 3x plus 7 all squared minus 4x minus 6, 3x plus 7 minus 7 must equal 0. So that gives me x squared plus 9x squared. 3 sevens is 21. Double that is 42x. 7 sevens is 49. Minus 4x. Minus 18x. Minus 42. Minus 7 equals 0. So we've got in total 10x squared. We've got 42 minus 18 minus 4 which is plus 20x. And then we've got 49 minus 42 minus 7, that's 0. So that equals 0. So we can, we can factorise that nice and easy. 10x is a common factor, obviously. x plus 2 equals 0. So that gives me two solutions. x equals 0 or x equals minus 2. 
to get our y's, we can just substitute them in. So at x equals 0, y equals 3 times 0 plus 7, which equals 7. So the first point we get is 0, 7. And at x equals minus 2, we get y equals 3 times minus 2 plus 7 minus 6 plus 7. That's 1. So our second point is minus 2, 1. So there's our P and there's our Q. Well, part B says PQ is the tangent to a second smaller circle. It's concentric with the first to determine the equation of the smaller circle. So let's put some information onto this circle. First of all, the centre of the circle. Well, that's just going to be 2, 3, half and half. Switch the signs. We already know the coordinates of point P and Q. 0, 7 and minus 2, 1. Now, if I draw this in, if I draw a radius going straight out to the bigger circle, well, it meets this chord at right angles and cuts it in half. So I can find this midpoint. So the mid of P and Q, well, that's just 0 plus minus 2 over 2 and 7 plus 1 over 2. Minus 2 over 2 is minus 1. 8 over 2 is 4. So our midpoint is minus 1, 4. So now we have the midpoint and we have the centre. We can work out the radius using the distance formula. We have got the square root of x2 minus x1 squared. So 2 minus minus 1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So that's 3 minus 4 squared. So that gives me the square root of 2 minus minus 1 is 3 squared, which is 9 plus minus 1 squared, which is 1, giving you a radius of the square root of 10. So our equation is as x minus 2 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals root 10 squared, which is 10. So, SQA High Maths 2016, paper 2, question 4, had this circle question. Circle C1 and C2 have these equations. And write down the centres and radius of the circles. So, for part A, remember, looking at the start of our exam paper, we are told quite a few things. But, essentially, minus 5 and 6 is the centre here. And for circle 2, well, we're going to have to do some work. So we call the number in front of x 2g. So if I say 2g equals minus 6, and the number in front of y we say is 2f, well, there's no y term, so that's 0. So g is minus 3, and f is 0. And the centre is defined as minus g minus f, so that is going to be 3 and 0. The radius of circle 1 is just the square root of 9, which is 3. And to get the radius of circle 2, remember, it's the square root of f squared plus g squared, so 0 squared plus 3 squared minus c. Well, c is minus 16, so plus 16. So that's the square root of 9 plus 16, square root of 25, which is 5. Part B says, show that C1 and C2 do not intersect. Well, if we can work out the distance between the two centres and then work out the distance of the, the two radiuses together, if the two radiuses add up to less than the distance between the centres, then they don't intersect. So our distance between C1 and C2, well, that's just Pythagoras, so it's minus 5 minus 3 squared. plus 6 minus nothing squared, distance formula. So that is the square root of minus 8 squared plus 6 squared. That's the square root of 64 plus 36. Square root of 100, which equals 10. So there's the distance between the centres. Sum of the radius of the radii. Well, that's just... 3 plus 5, 
which equals A. So since R1 plus R2 is less than the distance between the centers, the circles do not intersect. And we're done there. Let's go higher maths 2018, paper 2, question 12. Circle 1 has equation x minus 13 squared plus y plus 14 squared equals 100. And circle 2 has this equation. Write down the coordinates of the centre of circle C1. Well, that's nice and easy. C1 centre equals 13 minus 4. Part 2 says... The centre C1 lies on the circumference of C2, show that C is minus 455. So we've got our equation x squared plus y squared plus 14x minus 22y plus C equals 0. But we know that this centre lies on it. So if it lies on it, it means if I sub in 13 and minus 4 for x and y, that has to equal 0, otherwise it wouldn't lie on it. So we can just do that. So we get 13 squared plus minus 4 squared plus 14 times 13 minus 22 times minus 4 plus c equals 0. Bit of maths to do, but this was a calculator paper, so you just get your calculator out and work it out. You get 169 plus 16 plus 182 plus 88 plus c equals 0. So then adding up all the numbers, you get 455 plus C equals 0, and therefore C is negative 455 as required. Okay, part B says the line joining the centres of the circles intersects C1 at point P. Determine the ratio in which P divides the line joining the centres of the circle, and then find the coordinates of P. So the radius of C1 we already know is equal to 10. And we can work out the radius of our second circle by using the formula at the start of the exam paper. But I remember it is the square root of g squared plus f squared. So g is going to be 7 and f is minus 11 minus c, which is in this case 455, so plus c. So that gives us the square root of 625, just put it in a calculator, which is 25. So we've got our two radiuses. We know the, this radius here from C1 to P is 10. We know the radius from here all the way over to here is 25, so that must be 15, because 15 and 10 make 25. So the ratio it's dividing, P is dividing the line, is simply 15 to 10, which we can simplify to 3 to 2. And we're done there. Part 2, hence or otherwise determine the coordinates of P. So the centre of our first circle is minus 7, 11. And then join another line. I draw a right angle triangle here. We know that the distance here must be 13 minus minus 7, which is 20. And we know that the distance up the side is 11 minus minus 4, which is 15. And P is 3 fifths of the way along. So I just need to do 3 fifths of 15. Nine and three fifths of twenty, which is twelve. Minus seven add twelve is five. And for a y part, we're starting up at eleven and we're going down nine. Eleven minus nine is two, so we get five two, and we're done there. P is the centre of a third circle C three. C two touches C three internally. 
determine the equation of C3. So it's basically probably draw a picture for this one. So there's our picture, we've got our original picture, and then we've got this new circle, and it says that C2 touches C3 internally, so it's touching it at one point inside the circle, and we've determine the equation of C3. Remember, P is the center of this big, massive circle, okay? So our center, we already know, is 5, 2. And we need to work out our radius. But we already know some information from what we've already worked out previously. We know that the radius of this big circle here is 25. And we know that the distance between here and here was 15. Because it was 10 over here as well. 10 and 15 make 25. So if we know that the this is 25, and from here to here is 15, then the radius of our new circle is 25 plus 15, which is equal to 40. So now we've got everything we need. We can just write down our equation of our circle, x minus 5 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 40 squared. Working out 40 squared, you get x minus 5 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 1600. And what that. It's grade 2022, paper one, question 14, the final one of the paper, this one, and it was a circle question. It says circle one as equation x minus seven squared plus y plus five squared, and it equals 100. State the center and radius of the circle, and then hence or otherwise show that the point minus two seven lies outside the circle. Part B, is another circle with center P and R, determine the values where C1 and C2 have one point of intersection. Okay, so there's our formula sheet for circles that you didn't have to memorize, although you should probably know it by now, but it tells us the centers quite clearly. We've got seven minus five as our center for one mark. So for part A1, all we had to do is write down seven minus five, and that gives us a mark for our center. And then remember, looking at the formula sheet, we can work out the radius because if it's in already factorized form, the right hand side equals r squared. So we can write down r squared equals 100, therefore r equals 10 because it's the square root of 100 for our second mark. Nice and nice to start off with there. So let's move on to part two of the question and zoom a little bit. Part two says, hence or otherwise show the point minus two, seven lies outside of cent circle center one. Well, we can just substitute point P into the circle and check does it actually equal 100 or not. So, part two. So our P equals minus two and seven, which is our X and Y. So we've got for one mark, substituting that in, minus two, take away seven squared plus seven plus five squared is minus nine, all squared plus 12, all squared, that's 81 plus 144, which equals two, two, five. So that's our third mark, or the first mark of part two. For substituting in and working out to equals 225, we get a mark. Then we need to actually say what that means. So we can say that since 225 is bigger than 100, P must be outside the circle. Since 225 is bigger than 100, P lies outside the circle. And there we are for the next mark. So we've got four marks already. 11 part B says that C2 is a circle with center P and radius R. Determine the values for which C1 and C2 have exactly one point of intersection. So you've got two options. If I draw a circle here, then we'll call this C2. And that's center is P, which if we remind ourselves was minus two, seven. And then we've got our first circle, let's call it C1. And if we move that over so it's touching, the center of that circle was seven minus five. So if they're touching at one point, they're just touching externally, so that the radius, this, let's call it R1, 
plus R2 would be the distance between the circles. So R1 plus R2 would be the distances. Now we know that this radius for our first circle is already 10. We don't know the radius of our second circle, but we can work out the distance between the circles. So using the distance formula, R1 plus R2 equals x2 minus x1, 7 minus minus 2 is 9 squared, minus 5 minus 7, so plus 12 squared, 9 squared plus 12 squared is 225, which makes 15. The distance between the circles is 15. So that means the radius R1, in this case, would be 5, because 5 plus 10 is 15. So that's one option. Okay, so for the second option, we could have the two circles inside each other. And in that case, well, we already know that the radiuses together make 15. So the distance between these two circles is 15. But we already also know one other piece of information, that the radius of one of our circles is 10. And therefore, the radius of our other circle, 10 plus 15, is 25. R1 could be 25 for our second mark. So we get two marks, one for getting R1 equals to 5, and the other one for communicating that it must be 25. Okay, some unusual circle questions. 2015, paper 1, question 14. A circle with this equation meets the coordinate axis exactly three points. What is the value of k? So drawing a quick sketch of this, we've got 2g is minus 12 and 2f is minus 10. So g is equal to minus 6 and f is equal to minus 5. So our centre is equal to 6, 5. So along 6, up 5, somewhere is the centre of our circle, touches the coordinate axes at exactly three points. So it could, if this is the centre here, it could touch here, but then it would, only, it would have to touch at this point to come back up here. So if we draw a picture of that, we get something like this. That would be one option. And this is just a, a really quick sketch to get an idea of what's happening. But also, we could have that, we could have the y-axis be a tangent, so we could also alternatively have something like this is a tangent, but then it dips under. And this is a 0.65. So that's our two options for this question. So we'll just look at option one and option two. So let's look at option one. So let's look at the radius. We know it has zero, zero. So the radius of this is just going to be 6 minus 0 squared which is 6 squared plus 5 minus 0 squared, which is 5 squared. 6 sixes is 36 plus 25. That's just the square root of 6 to 1. So in option 1, we just get the square root of 6 to 1. So we know our radius is the square root of 6 to 1. But from the equation, g squared plus f squared minus c equals the radius. So we know that g and f is 6 and 5, but we've got c as k. So from the equation, we also get our radius is equal to the square root of 6 squared plus 5 squared minus k, because c is k. That is the square root of 6 to 1 minus k, and therefore k must be 0. That should be pretty obvious. So for option 1, k is 0. Now let's look at option 2. So in option 2, from the equation, our radius will still equal the square root of 61 minus k. But if we've got some points here, so this is along 6, so we know that that's the point 0, 6. Our radius is 6, in other words, so we know that the square root of 61 minus k must equal 6. Square on both sides, we get 61 minus k equals 36. So that means that k equals 61 minus 36, which is 25. So there's our two options for k. k could be 25 or k could be 0, depending on what exactly is happening in this, uh, this question.
Okay, unusual circle questions, SQA, higher math, 2019, paper 1, question 16, had this one. P is the point with coordinates 4K, and C is the center of the circle with this equation. Show the distance between P and C is given by square root of K squared plus 4K plus 13. So part A, we've got our points, 4 and K, and the center of our circle is equal to, well, let's have a look. We've got 1 minus 2. So we can work out the distance between them. That is going to be the square root of the difference in the x's, 4 minus 1 squared, plus the difference in the y's, k minus minus 2 squared. Tidying that up, we get the square root of 3 squared plus k plus 2 squared. That equals the square root of 9 plus k squared plus 4k plus 4 which equals the square root of k squared plus 4k plus 13, as required. Part B says, hence I'll always find the range of values of k such that p lies outside the circle. So let's draw a little picture for this. We've got a circle, and the centre of that circle is 1 minus 2. And we can look to see what the radius is. We know the radius is 5, the square root of 25. So that distance is 5, that's our radius. So if P is outside the circle, then clearly the distance between the centre and P must be bigger than 5. It has to be over 5. So we can then just say that the square root of K squared plus 4K plus 13 is greater than 5. And we can go from there. That's because our radius, remember, is 5. So quadratic inequality, square both sides, k squared plus 4k plus 13 is greater than 25. Taking the 25 over, we get k squared plus 4k minus 12 is greater than 0. And this is a quadratic inequality, so we examine the roots. So looking at our roots, we've got k squared plus 4k minus 12 is equal to 0. Double brackets, we get k and k, 6 and 2 plus 6 minus 2 is 4, so our roots happen at k equal to 2, or k equals minus 6. Drawing a quick sketch then of that graph, we get 2 over here somewhere, minus 6 over here. It's a positive k squared, so it is a happy face. We don't need the turning point or anything, because we're just looking to see when is this bigger than 0. Well, it's bigger than 0 above the x-axis, so it's over this side, it's always bigger than zero, and over this side, it's always bigger than zero as well. So our final answer is k is less than minus six, or k is bigger than two. And we're done there.